0.25 meters. Before we can actually go to work trying to find the unknown, which is the electric field, first we're going to have to find some other information about it. So on the formula sheet it says that the mass of a proton is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. From here, we can use that to help us find the initial velocity that the proton is traveling at when we start this problem. Because what we're going to end up doing is find its velocity, then we are going to find its acceleration. From there, we can find the force needed, and because we have the force needed, we can then use that to calculate the energy or the electric field that is needed. So for starters we know that the kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. So that's our velocity and we're trying to get that. So if we multiply and divide to get to isolate this, to isolate the velocity, we've got two kinetic energy over the mass and if we square root that we're left with just the velocity. What we can do from there is plug that into the equation that is V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2 acceleration change in X. This is, these are all equations from past units, but hopefully you guys can still remember how to do all this stuff. So the final velocity of this proton is zero, so we can cross that out. Just write in a zero over there. And we're going to want to isolate the acceleration. So if we subtract the stuff, so we've got minus the initial velocity squared, which is what we just found over here and then so we've got that and then divided by 2 change in x. The reason I did that is just because um, after we subtract that the only term on this side of the equation is 2 um, acceleration times the change in x. To get acceleration all by itself we'd have to divide by 2 and change in x. So we get that and we find the acceleration. From there, we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. And we're trying to find the force. And so if we just plug that in, if we plug in the mass and the acceleration that we found up here, we'll get the force. And using that force, we can put that into the equation that is E is equal to the electrostatic force which is the force we just found over Q or the charge of the proton and so that's way out there but we're just going to dive into this and start plugging in values for our substitution we're going to start by substituting in the values in order to find the velocity. And so we've got 2, then the kinetic energy, which is 3.25 times 10 to the negative 15 joules over, and then it's over the mass, which is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms and that's all square rooted and so when you solve for that what we're going to end up with is 1.97 times 10 to the 6 and that's meters per second from here, now that we've found the velocity, 
we can plug this into this equation to find the acceleration. So we're going to have negative and then 1.97 times 10 to the sixth meters per second squared over and then 2 times 1.25 meters. And when we calculate those together, the value that we're going to get is negative 1.5 six times 10 to the 12th meters per second squared. Okay? And so now that is equal to the velocity or to the acceleration. We're going to plug this acceleration into this equation in order to find the force. So we've got the mass of the proton, which is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms times negative 1.56 times 10 to the 12 meters per second squared. And so the answer that we get when we multiply those together is negative 2.6 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons. All right, and so now that we found the force, we can plug this into this equation to find the actual electrostatic energy or electric field for this problem because we also have the charge of the proton. So we've got negative 2.6 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons over 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 and that's in coulombs. And so we multi or we divide those and the answer we get is the solution and that solution is negative 16250. So negative 16250. When you put that into scientific notation that's going to be negative 1.63 times 10 to the fourth newtons over coulombs. Now the reason that's a negative is because I know I didn't label it up here but the way I calculated everything the positive direction is that way and so since it's a negative value that means that it is in the opposite direction that the electric field is pushing against this proton in order to stop it in the given distance. All right, so I hope that made sense. And now we're going to move on to number nine. In problem number nine, we're told that there are two parallel metal plates that are a certain distance apart and that they have a uniform electric field. Now, what a uniform electric field is, it's a field that does not change as distance increases. Normally, if you were to have, say, a charge here that has an electric field, the further you get from it, the less the field is. So if you have a point here, the field is less at a point all the way out here than it is at this point right here. Well, in, in, in a uniform electric field, that would stay the same no matter what distance you are from the plate. So that's just a little explanation on what that means in the problem. And so in our givens for this problem, we have their distance, which I'm going to convert to meters. And so the change in x is 0 0.05 meters. And the, um, the charge or the, the electric field is 12,000 newtons divided by coulombs and the whole thing for this problem is there's a positive plate and a negative plate and on the positive plate there's a proton and on the negative plate there's an, uh, an electron and we're supposed to find which particle reaches the other plate first and how much sooner it arrives 
So the unknown for this is actually going to be the change in time. The equations we're going to be using are going to basically get us from just this, from these numbers, all the way to getting the times. In this problem, the equation that we're going to start with, the base equation is the energy of the electric field is equal to the electrostatic force over the charge of something influenced by it. And so what we're trying to isolate in this case is the electrostatic force. So we've got EQ is equal to the electrostatic force. From there, this is going to be kind of similar to the last problem where because of the equation just force is equal to mass times acceleration, we know that EQ is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And since we have three of these values for any of the particles, we can find the charge and the mass of a proton and of an electron. We can find the acceleration. So acceleration is equal to EQ over M. And using that acceleration, because we also have the distance, we can use the equation x final is equal to x initial plus v initial times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. So the initial velocity is zero, so that we can cancel out. And the initial x position is zero. So what we're left with is the basically the change in x and then one half a t squared. And up to this point we will have found the acceleration and we can just move that all together. So what we end up with is two change in x over the acceleration and the square root of that is equal to the time of a particle, the time that it takes a particle to get from one side, so from say for this electron, to get from the negative plate to the positive plate. And what we do is we do this for both the um, for both the proton and the electron and after we've done that we subtract um, one of the times from the other time and we use that number to basically figure out which got there first and the number that we get from that is the time difference between the two so we've got we're going to end up finding the change in time for p minus the change in time for the electron and so we're just going to dive right in and start by plugging in the values for the proton into this equation so we're going to say that so let's just say substitution substitution so the acceleration is equal to our electric field which has a value of 12,000 newtons over coulombs times the charge of the um, the charge of the proton which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs sorry that's a 6 and that's over 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms so we multiply all those together and what we're left with is the acceleration for the proton is 1.15 times 10 to the 12th meters per second squared. And now, just because I want to be doing kind of the same thing at the same time, we're going to find the acceleration for an electron. So that's 12,000 newtons over coulombs times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs over 9.11 times 10 
to the negative 31 